Today we are doing part one of acid-base titrations, the standardization of sodium hydroxide. To do this, we have three pure solid acids. We have benzoic acid, oxalic acid, and potassium hydrogen phthalate. So we are first going to start with benzoic acid, and we want to measure out very carefully and accurately the mass of our benzoic acid. So to do this properly without contaminating my container, I will take and just pour some into my first weigh boat. Next, I will take my empty weigh boat and zero it on my balance. Now I can take my solid benzoic acid and start measuring out how much I have. I am aiming to get around 0 0.40 grams. So now that it is reading at 0 0.403 grams, I'm going to shut the door to make sure that it is an accurate reading. The mass is not changing, so I know that this is an accurate reading. So I can record that I have massed out 0 0.403 grams of benzoic acid. So here I have a 50 ml burette, which is stored in the lab. You will be able to find these in the lab when you need them. They are stored with water in them in order to keep them clean. So in order to begin, we need to take the rubber stopper off, go to our sink, invert, and then open the stopcock in order to let all the water escape from our, from our burette. Now that we have the empty burette, I will close the stopcock. I will move to my ring stand with my uh, double burette clamp. Here we have our freshly emptied burette from water. We now need to rinse it with our titrant. In this case, we have 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. We need to rinse it with our titrant in order to prevent any of the titrant from being diluted later when we are measuring and titrating our samples. I have pre-measured three milliliters of sodium hydroxide in my graduated cylinder. Then I'm going to add them to my closed burette using my funnel. So my three milliliters of sodium hydroxide has filled my burette to about right where my thumb is. It is sitting a little bit below the 50 milliliter mark or the very bottom mark on the burette. When you are going to be rinsing your burette, you should aim to either pre-measure three milliliters or eyeball your titrant to about this level. If you use any more than that, you will end up wasting a significant portion of your titrant and you will run out in lab. Now here I have my burette with my three milliliters of titrant, in this case 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. To rinse it, I want to take and hold the burette almost horizontal, but not enough to where it is running outside the end of my burette, which is why I have it capped with my finger. And I just want to roll my titrant around in my burette this thoroughly coats the walls of the burette with our titrant and picks up any remaining water which would dilute it once I've rolled this several times I will take and rehold my burette vertical and now I will need to drain my uh, rinsing sodium hydroxide or titrant into my rinse or waste glass. So I can take this, open my stopcock, let all of it drain out. I can then shut my stopcock and we need to repeat this rinsing process twice more. So we have three rinses total. Next. I will then fill my burette, get the bubbles out from both the tip and the burette 
and then I am ready to titrate. Now that my burette is filled to the zero mark, I'm going to remove the air bubbles from my tip by opening the stopcock and letting some of my titrant go through until all the air is out. All of the air has escaped. So next, I need to make sure that I am still at my zero mark. I am not, since I have used some of my titrant. So it will fill back to the zero. Now I need to wait for the air bubbles that I have created while I was pouring in my titrant to go and gather at the top. Once they've gathered up there, I will then make sure that I either fill to the zero mark if I need to, or let out a little titrant in order to get down to the zero mark. Now I can begin my titration of benzoic acid. In order to do this, I need to first create my benzoic acid solution. So I will take my benzoic acid and pour it into my 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Next, I will take 95% ethanol. I have pre-measured out the 25 milliliters that I will need in my 100 mil graduated cylinder. I will take and add that 25 mils to my flask and swirl to begin dissolving my benzoic acid. The reason why we are using 95% ethanol instead of water in order to make our acid solution is because benzoic acid does not readily dissolve in water. So here you can see that all of my acid has dissolved into solution. We do not have any white flecks remaining anywhere in the flask. Since I have now created my solution, I will take my thymol blue indicator and add 10 drops to my flask. Now that I've added my 10 drops, I will swirl. Now you can see we have a yellow solution from our indicator. Now we are ready to titrate with our 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Since we are using thymol blue, we are looking to titrate until we get a green color. We do not want to go and get a blue color. That means we have overshot our endpoint. Because we have calculated that we have 0.0 Zero 03 moles of acid in our flask and we have 0.1 molar solution, we expect to use around 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide in order to titrate this solution. Since I am now nearing my 30 milliliter estimation, I am slowing down and waiting to see when I get a significant color change. I am adding my solution dropwise. As I was titrating, I misjudged the color for a moment. And as you see, I now have a very light blue solution instead of the green that I was expecting, which means that I've gone over my endpoint. I'm going to need to retitrate my benzoic acid. We are going to be titrating until we reach a green color. We do not want to titrate until we are at blue. If we are at blue, we have overshot our endpoint. And with the mass of benzoic acid I have used, I have calculated that I have roughly 0 0.003 moles of acid in my flask, which, if my sodium hydroxide is around 0 0.1 molar, I should expect to use close to 30 milliliters of my sodium hydroxide. With that now, I can start my titration. Since I am nearing my expected endpoint, I am slowing down in adding my sodium hydroxide, and I am only going to be adding dropwise from here on out. It is very difficult to reach this green color accurately without over titrating our solution. Oop. 
as we just saw there, there was a very quick flash of color change which means I'm very, very close to my endpoint. So I want to add one more drop very carefully. There we go. All right. Now as I've finished swirling, my solution has settled as a greenish color, which means we have reached our endpoint. So now I can go ahead and record how much sodium hydroxide I have used for my calculations later. Next we are going to be titrating our oxalic acid. So I will need to make my solution. I will add my oxalic acid right here into my flask. I will then take 50 milliliters of deionized water that I have pre-measured in my graduated cylinder here. Since I can see that there is some oxalic acid still stuck in my weigh boat, I'm going to just take a small amount of my water and rinse my weigh boat. So I gather all of my oxalic acid into my solution. Now that I've rinsed, I will take and fill Now I can take my flask and begin swirling in order to dissolve my acid. So I no longer have any flex of my oxalic acid. I can now take and add my thymol blue indicator. As you can see, we have our solution as a pink color. We expect this because our pH level is lower than uh, previously with benzoic acid, so this is still functioning properly for this indicator. And so with the amount of oxalic acid I've added into my flask, I've calculated that I have about 0.002 moles of acid in my flask. Since it is a diprotic acid, I'm expecting to use double the amount of base in order to titrate it. So I should need to use about 40 milliliters of sodium hydroxide in order to titrate this acid. As you see, the color is changing from pink to yellow, showing that our thymol blue is working just as we expect it to. Since we are unsure of our molarity of sodium hydroxide, I need to start being cautious before I reach my 40 milliliter estimation point just in case my sodium hydroxide is actually stronger than I would have expected to need. So I'm being quite careful now as I'm nearing my mark to look for quick flashes of color indicating that I'm near my end point just like that. So I had a flash of blue appear in my solution, which means I'm very close to my endpoint. So I'm just going to take and add very slowly and very carefully one drop at a time. I do not want any more than one drop going into my solution. Again, there was another quick flash. And there we go. I am now at my green endpoint that I am looking for. Actually, no. Looking at it again, I am still yellow, so I should only need a small drop of sodium hydroxide in order to reach my endpoint. And there we go. I am at a light green endpoint, so I can stop and record the volume of sodium hydroxide I used my calculation later. Next we are going to be titrating our potassium hydrogen phthalate. So in order to do that I will make my solution by adding all of my solid. Then I'll be using 50 milliliters of deionized water. I can see that I have some potassium hydrogen phthalate left over in my weigh boat. 
So I will just very carefully use a small amount of my DI water to rinse my way boat. I am using my measured DI water because I do not want to use any excess. And now that I have all my potassium hydrogen phthalate in my flask, I can add the last of my water and I can begin swirling. All right, now that I have no more flex in solution, I can go ahead. Actually, I just noticed I have a couple of pieces right on the wall of my flask. So I'm going to pull those down, swirl to get them into solution. And now that I have no flex in solution, I can go and take my thymol blue indicator, add 10 drops, and swirl. We are getting our yellow color. Based on my calculation, I have about 0 0.004 moles of my KHP, potassium hydrogen phthalate, in my solution. So I should need to use just about 40 milliliters of my sodium hydroxide. Now we can titrate our potassium hydrogen phthalate. I am beginning to near my endpoint, so I'm going to be adding dropwise until I start seeing little flashes of blue. That is when I know I am very, very close to my end point. My blue color is starting to stay a little longer in my solution. So I am now starting to be extra cautious while adding my drops of sodium hydroxide. Just like that, there was a flash of blue, which means I'm very near my endpoint. And just like that, with that final drop, I have achieved my light green color, and I can stop and measure the volume of sodium hydroxide I used in order to titrate my solution. In this next part, we are investigating the acid content of consumer products. To start, you're going to be using vinegar or acetic acid. We have a solution of 5% vinegar right here. This is the approximate concentration. We do not know for sure, which is why we are going to be titrating it with our now standardized 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. We want to use about 40 milliliters of our sodium hydroxide. So through our calculations, we have decided that we need to use about five milliliters of our vinegar in order to use about 40 milliliters of our sodium hydroxide. Now that I have added my five mils of vinegar, I can add 10 drops of thymol blue indicator and swirl. We are getting a pinkish color, but again, that is fine for thymol blue because that is just what it indicates at if it is at a significantly low pH. So I can start my titration. As you see, we've already turned back to the yellow color that we expect. I have quite a buildup of air bubbles in my solution, so I just want to kind of swirl and let them settle before I continue. And there we go, now that I've eliminated most of those, I can go back to titrating. I'm starting to have my blue color of indicator last in my solution, so I've slowed down to dropwise addition. My blue indicator is now lasting quite a bit longer in solution, so I'm very carefully adding one drop at a time. And there we go. I have now reached my endpoint. I am at my light green indicator color, so I can stop and record the amount of sodium hydroxide I used for titration. So I checked and I used 42.9 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And upon double checking, I've confirmed I've used 42.9 milliliters of my standardized sodium hydroxide solution in order to titrate my roughly 5% vinegar solution. We now have everything that we need in order to calculate the true concentration of the acetic acid in our vinegar.
Next, we are going to be titrating aspirin to check its acid content. This bottle says that it has 325 milligrams of aspirin per tablet. So I'm going to now take one tablet from the bottle and add it directly to my flask. I'm going to take 25 milliliters of DI water and add to my flask. And I want to swirl this until my aspirin tablet begins to crumble and dissolve. This can take some time. If you want, you can crush the tablet prior to adding it to your flask in a weigh boat. However, you want to make sure that you have pre-massed that weigh boat on a scale. That way you can see how much aspirin you have possibly lost as you crushed the tablet. But as you can see, it did not take too long for us to have our tablet dissolve and crumble into the water. Now that it has separated, I'm going to be adding 25 milliliters of 95% ethanol. We are adding ethanol in order to fully dissolve our tablet. The majority of our tablet has dissolved into our solution. Starch is used as a binder in these aspirin tablets, which the starch may or may not dissolve into our solution. So I'm going to take it as it is and add my thymol blue indicator. As I continue swirling during the titration process, if there is any slight bit of aspirin left over, it should dissolve into solution during the titration. I've added my 10 drops of thymol blue. We are getting our yellow color into our solution. Now I can take and begin titrating. According to my calculations, I estimate that I should need about 18 milliliters of sodium hydroxide here to titrate my aspirin tablet, if the label is correct. I'm starting to see some flashes of blue in my solution. So I'm going to begin slowly adding dropwise. Thymol blue is yellow in the presence of acid and blue in the presence of base. Since we are trying to titrate to a, our neutral pH, we expect actually a greenish color to be our endpoint, since this is the transition color between yellow and blue. I'm very near to my endpoint now, since the flashes are taking much longer in order to dissipate. And there we go, with that final drop, I have gotten my light green color in solution, so I can stop and record the volume of sodium hydroxide I used, which is 17.7 .7 mils of sodium hydroxide. And now we can go ahead and calculate the true amount of aspirin that we have and see if our label was correct. Now that we are at the end of the lab, I need to take care of the sodium hydroxide still within my burette. So I have my rinse beaker here. I'm just going to empty the remainder of my sodium hydroxide into my beaker, and this will be disposed of in the acid-base waste in lab. And then once I am done, I will take the emptied burette, flip it upside down and clamp it to my double burette clamp. That way it is ready for use for the next lab. If you are the final lab at the end of the week, you will take and actually rinse the burette with water and then fill it and cap it so that it can be put away into storage just like you found it when you got it out originally. So now that my burette is empty, I will take, invert, and reclamp. And now I can leave the burette like this for the next lab. Now I will go and dispose of my sodium hydroxide.